Hello and welcome to Gaula Vision's Your Inner World series. This is part eight of the mini series, and today we're gonna get into a super juicy topic, the Yatsarhara. What is the Yatsarhara? What does it want? How can we use it to our advantage? How do we identify its voice within us? Because the Yatsarhara is a consummate con artist. So let's discuss. So the Yatsarhara is our negative inclination. It's literally translated as, as negative inclination. Um, it's also identified in some places as the Samach Mem or the Satan, which literally just means the opponent. And in some places in Hasidus, it's also identified that the Yetzirah is actually the emotional drive of the Nefesh Bahamas when left unchecked. So we have all these really interesting ways of seeing the Yetzirah, but what does Hasidus really tell us about who it is, who or what the Yetzirah is on the deeper levels? So the Yetzirah's function in a, in a really tiny nutshell is essentially to get us to do things that are going to feed the klipas. And what are the klipas again? The klipas are these, um, these energies that block out our perception of godliness, that keep God hidden in this world. And remember, what, like, why, why do we not want that? Because literally our entire mission and the entire purpose of the creation of the universe is that God should be revealed in this world. So anything that conceals God is contrary to our own purpose and to the literal purpose of the universe. So this is why we want to avoid doing things that feed the klipas. Now, what things feed klipas? The things that most powerfully feed the klipas are averas, um, which is translated as sin. But what is an avera or a sin? It's anything that the Torah tells us not to do that we do, or anything that the, tel that the Torah tells us to do that we then don't do. The reason the Torah tells us not to do certain things is because when we do those things, it, we channel our, our own holy and divine energy into the klipas, which massively strengthens the concealment of Hashem in this world, the concealment of God. And again, we're all about revealing. And whenever there's something that we should be doing, um, you know, a, a positive mitzvah or um, a mita or a character trait, something within ourselves that we should be working on and we don't do it, that also that keeps um, godly revelation from coming into the world. So it effectively keeps things Keep, keeps things concealed and you know it's the klipas that make this world appear to exist independently on its own like yeah a, a big bang happened the world came into creation and you know evolution and the systems of the systems of nature everything runs on its own it's like a self-contained thing it's just it's the forces of nature so that mentality and our ability to see that and believe that because on a surface level like these, yeah, of course, there are systems of nature, there are systems of economics, there are systems of psychology, of biology. All of those things are real, but there is a designer underneath them. So it's the klipas that make everything seem like, no, nah, this just happened. Like there's no designer and no purpose. Um, so getting back to the Yitzhahara, it's the Yitzhahara's job essentially to try to get us to do things um, that feed that feed the klipas, either a you know, Averas or making us be like, nah, I'll do that later. Like for like one of the one of the biggest um, things that I always put off is is benching, saying the blessing after a meal. Now nah, I'll do it later. I'll do it later, and then eventually, it's like three hours later, and I never benched, and I missed the window within halacha or Jewish law to bench. So that's totally the Yitzhahara. That's like, eh, I'll get to it in a little bit, and then inevitably never get to it. Um, so. What does the voice of the Yitzhahara sound like within us? Because very often it sounds, it, it even takes on the voice of our godly soul. Like we have, it's a real disservice that we all kind of see our Yitzhahara as this like, this like, <laughs> like evil superhero, like, or not evil, so evil, evil villain, like snickering in the corner with his handlebar mustache or whatever. Um, and that's exactly how the Yetzirah wants us to think of it, because when we picture the Yetzirah that way, we're like, yeah, that has nothing to do with me. Uh, I don't even have a mustache. So, you know what I mean. The Yetzirah, the Yetzirah is, it's, it's an inner voice within us. It speaks in our voice, or it, it can take on the voices of, of other people in our life who may have, um, who may try to hold us back. You know, it can take on some, it can take on 
sometimes the voice of our parents, the voice of teachers, anything that, that breaks us down and, and keeps us from, um, hopefully not the voices of our parents and teachers, but you know, it, it can take on the voice of even people who are close to us want, you know, that anything that really keeps us paralyzed from doing the things that we should, even in our own personal growth and our own, in our own personal development, because that's all part of our service of God also. So how can you tell when something is like a desire that, that can and should be honored, that we can elevate to, to God, to elevate into Kedush and holiness and use it to reveal God, and when it's really coming from the Yitzhar Hara. So this is, this is, it's complex, it's nuanced, and this is why, another reason why we all need a Mashpia, someone we can turn to to help us decipher these voices within us, because when they're within us, it can be, it can be super hard, especially because, again, the Yitzhar Hara can, can take on the voice and does take on our own inner voice. It's a con artist. It's a master of camouflage and disguise. So a good way to know, like, is this particular desire coming from my Yetzir Hara is to ask yourself, what is the outcome going to be? And like, be really honest. When, when my Yetzir Hara comes to me and says, I'll give another example. Another thing that I, that I love to push off is davening, is saying my morning prayers. The Yetzir Hara will come to me and say, oh, you're not in a good state of mind yet. You're thinking about all the work that you have to do. Um, you know, or maybe, oh, you're not really, you know, you're not dressed properly, whatever. Um, and I, all those things may be true. Like, yeah, I'm, I may totally be distracted right now, but um, I may not really be dressed nicely in, an, in a way that's like honoring the connection to God that is formed when we daven, when we pray. Um, and yeah, those things are true. And it sounds like the Yitzhahara is trying to like be really holy. Um, but what's the outcome of that is that I'm going to push off a mitzvah and I know myself and I'm probably not going to end up doing it. I'm going to be laying in bed and say, oh my God, I didn't daven today at night. So, um, so ask yourself, like, what is the outcome of this? Is this going to result in me doing a mitzvah and me connecting to Hashem and me revealing God in this world to me becoming a healthier, better person or helping another person to become a healthy, better person? Or is this going to essentially result in channeling energy into the klipas in, in holding me back in, in me not feeling good and expanded? I'll give another mundane example. Say like I have a desire for, for some ice cream. That's totally okay because, you know, it's, it's okay to enjoy the pleasures of this world. Again, if you have in mind the permissible pleasures in this world, as long as we have in mind that like, I'm going to get some pleasure from this ice cream and I am going to then use this to be like an expanded state of mind to, to feel good, to be calm, to be besimcha, to be joyful because we're supposed to serve God with like a peaceful, happy heart to be, God wants us to be happy. So a reasonable amount of ice cream will do that for me. But once you cross that line, into like, I just ate an entire pint of ice cream and now I feel disgusting and I don't feel good and I feel like I totally lost control of myself and I also feel physically ill. That's coming from the Yitzhahara. So the Yitzhahara can even come in after we have um, done something that's permissible and then try to try to get you to go overboard. So what's the difference between the Yitzhahara and the Nafasha Bahamas? That it's the Yitzhahara, the Yitzhahara is, is trying to to get us to um, to channel the energy into the klipas, to go overboard with permitted pleasures um, or with permissible activities or things of this world, or to try to get us all together to go into um, activities or, or thoughts or things that are not permissible um, to get us to channel more energy into the klipas. And the Nefesh HaBahamas, its desires are mostly neutral. They're just earthly. And and it's, it's when the Yitzhar Hara comes and capitalizes on that and tries to, uh, you know, have us go overboard. You know, that desire for ice cream is coming from the Nefesh Bahamas. That voice that then says, just finish the rest of that. Eat like, eat the, that whole pint of ice cream. That's coming from the Yitzhar Hara that's trying to get you into a state of really feeling bad. And we're going to talk tomorrow more about the Yitzhar Hara, um, about how it affects our emotions and our moods. And what its deeper purpose really is, because we're going to learn that the Yitzhar Hara is actually a good guy or a good gal with a bad job. Um, and this is actually one of the most interesting and empowering um, things about the Yitzhar Hara and about creation in general. 
and we're gonna uh, you're gonna have to wait till tomorrow to learn about it have a great day